No one knows for sure when humans first encountered oil. Though it was certainly at least 3,000 years ago. And probably here, in the lands of the ancient Persian Empire, where the chemical remains of fossilized sunlight still wind their way to the surface. Of course, it's not only oil that can escape from the ground. This is Yan Adar, or Burning Mountain in Azerbaijan. And the natural methane seeping from the earth here caught fire over 50 years ago. And it's been burning ever since. Today, we see such a display as evidence of a possible oil deposit nearby. In the days of the Persian Empire, it was a sign of the gods. The Zoroastrian religion, like its eternal flames, survives to this day. Fire temples were built around natural vents like this one near Baku. Worshippers heard the hisses of the natural gas as the talk of spirits and saw the constant flames as the divine manifestation of truth. It seems wherever oil was encountered, people found a use for it. It had a value uh, as pitch. They would heat it, melt it, and then coat their boats with it. They would throw it into water and see what kind of, whatever shape it took would tell them something about the future. The Chinese had a complete industry long before Christ they had pipelines made out of bamboo and they had junks that carried oil. The Greeks would mix it with sulfur and put it in a clay pot, and light it on fire, and it's essentially a bomb, an oil bomb. They'd dump it overboard and set fire to it and burn the enemy ships. In the Middle Ages, they discovered that they could use oil to make uh, flamethrowers out of it. By the 1800s, one enterprising American was even flogging it off to drink as the ultimate cure-all tonic. But in the end, it was a shortage of sperm whales that finally kick-started the oil age. With the price of whale oil skyrocketing, the discovery of how to distill kerosene from crude created the first global demand for lighting. From Baku to the backwoods of Pennsylvania, there was money to be made pulling oil from the ground quickly and cheaply. Everything came together in August of 1859. Uh, there was the refining process. There was the, the lamp that could burn kerosene without giving off too much smoke. There were the financiers in New York and Connecticut that had the land and the money. And there was Edwin Drake, who was a, uh, a retired railroad conductor who was in poor health, who needed a job. The first few times that they tried drilling, the hole kept collapsing on them. And so he got the idea of sending up to Erie PA for a, uh, a big piece of steel pipe. And they drove that into the ground and then started drilling through that. At 69 and a half feet, they struck black gold. Crude oil began to surge up the pipe. Drake may not have been the first person to drill for oil, but it was here, down this very hole in the ground, that he unleashed the oil genie once and for all. And it's no exaggeration to say that what happened next in this quiet green valley in Pennsylvania changed the world forever. they only produced 2,000 barrels of oil. It was still a marvel. And by 
the 1880s, Pennsylvania was literally the leading oil producing area of the world. Over half of the world's oil came out of Pennsylvania. The oil genie was now fully out of the bottle and into the barrel. People had rigs everywhere, thousands of rigs, as far as you can see, because it was just, everyone was just hoping for the jackpot. It took less than a couple decades to drain most of the oil out of that state, and they moved on to Ohio, they moved on to Indiana, they moved on to Oklahoma, so it kept sort of wildcatting all over the place. When Thomas Edison switched on his electric light bulb in 1879, he simultaneously switched off the demand for kerosene. The emerging big oil monopolies like J.D. Rockefeller's Standard Oil Company needed to find a new market for the oil they were swimming in. And it didn't take long to find one. It was the internal combustion engine and it had a thirst for a waste product of the kerosene business, gasoline. The automobile came along roughly 1910, and by 1920, Ford was turning out, was mass-producing automobiles, and this was when my mother claimed that the world changed for them, that the farm and the people who lived on the next farm weren't the horizon anymore. She went away to college. Ex-showman Ken DeFay's was a direct witness to the unfolding revolution. Well, I was born right in the middle of the Oklahoma City oil field, and my father was a first-generation petroleum engineer. If I was a good boy, I got to go to the field with Daddy on weekends, and he could explain about the pipe and the derrick and the mud. And when I took petroleum engineering at the Colorado School of Mines, the professor opened by stating, we date the birth of petroleum engineering from the invention of the bottom hole pressure gauge. I about fell out of my chair because my father and three other guys cranked first one by hand into a well in Oklahoma City in 1927. From the 1920s onwards, the oil and automotive industries worked together to help the world choose its future. As the price of crude fell, petrol-driven vehicles became more competitive than the electric cars that preceded them. Electric tram companies were bought out and the tramways dismantled. Bicycle pathways were abandoned and governments persuaded instead to build paved roads and highways for cars. Before we knew it, we'd all moved out to the suburbs, we were all getting completely addicted, um, and we were designing economies built around this stuff, every sector of every economy. we were seduced by convenience and power. As an energy source, oil has no equal. Like wood and coal, it would burn in air. But as a liquid, it's easy to transport. And the power of ancient sunlight stored in the strong bonds between carbon and hydrogen atoms can release a hundred times more energy than it costs to get it out of the ground. The thing about oil is it has incredible energy density. You know the old um, question which the schoolmaster puts to the class, what, do you, what will fill a teacup and lift a ton um, a thousand meters into the air? And the class looked at it. And of course, 